Hi, everybody. I'm Lumumba Seegers. I'm a doctoral student here at HBS. Um, today, I'm going to talk about, you know, a lot of times we think about the moral and the business cases for diversity and like challenging inequality. I think there are also moral and business cases for that. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about the personal case for challenging inequality. Whose fight is it anyway? In 1947, Jackie Robinson challenged the racial segregation taking place in Major League Baseball when he became the first black man to play for the Brooklyn Dodgers. And so there was a lot of vitriol just spewed at him on and off the field. But this man right here, Pee Wee Reese, actually treated him with kindness and respect. I want to know why. A story early in, in Reese's life kind of gives us a hint at it. When, when Reese was just a boy in his native Kentucky, his father took him to a tree and he says, black people were lynched there. And this moment had a profound impact on his life and Reese ended up developing a personal identity that was around a value of respect for interpersonally, interracially, so there's, he had this personal identity. And this identity seemed to counteract the values that were related with his social identity as a white person and a member of this white dominant group. So today I wanna talk to you just for a few minutes about this tension as a means for challenging inequality. And so, how can members of dominant groups challenge intergroup inequality? We've heard this in a couple of ways in the literature. One is by attempting to help the subordinate group members. So we're thinking about allies, people who join social movements. Well, also, it can be to protect the dominant in-group's reputation. So if you experience group image threat when you feel as if, when you realize that your group has done past and present moral wrongdoing. Um, the problem with these, though, is that one complication is that these social identities are still rooted in the very hierarchy um, in which they're trying to get around. But we also know that people have personal identities, which are composed of idiosyncrat idiosyncratic attributes and values that help differentiate us from others, such as being creative, being sensitive, um, having respect, caring about equality, and that possibly people may feel the need to protect these personal identities from the constraints of the expectations tied to their social identities. And so I wanna just talk to you about a model that looks at the intrapersonal relationship between one's social identity, their dominant social identity, and their personal identities. And so I'm gonna walk you um, through this model, and there are three main buckets. The first is that people begin to wrestle with this awareness of what their dominant social identity means and their dominant social identity and their personal identities both become salient. The second part is that they then begin to reshape their identities and then they engage in intergroup processes towards challenging inequality. So I'm gonna walk you through this with um, an example. So imagine a man, if you will, who has a personal identity that's around equal partnerships in his personal life. Um, generally, and this man decides that eventually he will want to co-parent with his partner in an equal relationship. And so when a baby comes, this man decides that he's going to take paternity leave. And so suddenly within his work environment, his ideal worker male image is salient, but also this personal identity is salient. So they both become salient. And now he's going to hear comments possibly at work where it be, that are either explicit or implicit about work family balance being a woman's thing and breadwinning being a man's thing. And so he's going to start to feel possible conflict between these and what is expected of him at work. Now because of the ascribed nature of our social identities, the expectations tied to them are actually very difficult, if not impossible, to exit. And so he's gonna to start to feel as if he can enact that personal identity and that's gonna become very threatening, so he will experience personal identity threat. And so we argue at this point, one thing that people can do is to actually find other people in their group who have shared values. And so we say that people can actually narrow in and begin to focus in on people within their group whose values match theirs. And we call this process identity focusing. And so you can't just choose a lot of times still to say, all right, I don't want to abide by these expectations that people hold of you. So we argue that people will then to have to begin to try to defend this subgroup by advocating for their prototypicality 
of the group as a whole. And then the challenge toward inequality actually becomes an extension of defending that subgroup and their personal values. So men who um, might find themselves fighting for more equitable work-family balances at work that have traditionally also harmed women. Thank you very much.